A very warm welcome if you're watching from us here and elsewhere around the world. I'm Ethan Tashobia. And I am Gloria Mutesi. Glad to have your company today. It's the 10th day of October. Ethan, how are you today? Very well. How are you? I'm very well. Had a good day? Yes, I had. I feel blessed. How was your week? Uh, quite a, an eventful one. I had a long one, but I'm thankful for what God has brought uh, in my hands. Anything that caught your attention in particular? Uh, maybe uh, this uh, quite a number of events. Two, one, a, a sports one, basketball, uh, NBA playoffs, and uh, the ends uh, sales uh, hashtag that has been trending in Nigeria and yeah. across the world. Yeah. I can't wait to delve that deeper. But for now, we will start off tonight's bulletin by telling you that Kigali City authorities have announced that 420 houses in Busanza of Chichichiro District will be complete by the 24th of this month of October and will be ready to receive people from high-risk zones in Kigali who will be resettled there. This comes after a visit to the settlement by the Minister for Local Government on Saturday. Sessionary kicks us off tonight with this story. Visiting the apartment blocks over the weekend, Professor Anastas Shaka urged that construction activities be finalized quickly and adjustments be made on things that those who will be living in them have criticized. While Kigali city officials are giving assurances that the homes will be complete in two weeks' time. The construction work is comprised of two major sections. The outside where things like the roads are to be properly prepared, street lighting complete, as well as the planting of gardens. Then there is what is being done inside the apartments themselves where people will live. We expect that some of the houses will be complete on the 15th of this month, while the rest should be done by the 24th so that people can start moving in. We also pointed out corrections to be made quickly. The mayor also noted that the settlement's future residents are eager to move in. It is one of our responsibilities as leaders to show people why it is important for them to be relocated, showing them where they have been living and the place they are to go to. We have done this before and it has yielded results, and so this is not the first time people are getting relocated, be to move them from harm's way or simply to improve housing in the city. This is why we ask those we work with at the local level to explain to people the importance of this and many are understanding and even becoming impatient because they want to move, saying we should speed up the construction so that they can move. Officials at the Rwanda Housing Authority say proper housing is the way forward. This means people living in urban areas must be put in affordable proper housing that meets all requirements. Also, apartment blocks are the only way to resettle people using as little land as possible, and the priority must be given to those in high-risk zones and other improper settlements. That will make addressing the problem of poorly built settlements possible in Kigali. Infrastructure is also necessary, things like water, electricity and proper waste management, good roads and playgrounds for children. All that is being catered for at this site. These 420 houses that have almost been complete are just the first phase of the project, with 1,024 to be built at a cost of 15 billion Rwandan francs. Thank you, sir, for that report. Moving on, mental health experts say that in these times of COVID-19, people should be compassionate and close to those considered to be most vulnerable so that their mental health is not distressed. We have this report. It's been more than 10 months since the COVID-19 pandemic grappled the world, including Rwanda. This has been a time that people from all walks of life have said has not been easy and has brought their work to a standstill. <laughs> When we were at home during lockdown, it was a very frustrating time for me because work had stalled. I was bothered by living without work. Sitting at home was frustrating and times were long. We are greatly affected by the coronavirus, both in our homes and at work. 
we no longer have capital. We weren't trading as much, and we even incurred losses. I was spending while not working, so I ran out of money. I spent all the capital. October 10th is International Mental Health Day, a day established by the United Nations to review the achievements of mental health care and address issues that remain in the field. The head of the mental health department at the Rwanda Biomedical Center, Dr. Kaiten Shonga Yvonne, says these unprecedented times of COVID-19 require people to show compassion. It's important for everyone to be close to one another especially to those we know are fragile. We need to be close to them so they don't get lonely and filled with grief and fall into depression because coming together and socializing is no longer popular like it used to be. If we are not careful, someone suffering from mental illness can't commit suicide. That's why we need to reach out to these people and look out for them and if necessary, take them to the doctors. <laughs> The World Health Organization says that the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated mental health problems, while the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for mental health services to be improved. It deserves our commitment. Too few people have access to quality mental health services. In low- and middle-income countries, more than 75% of people with mental health conditions receive no treatment at all. And overall, Governments spent on average less than 2% of their health budgets on mental health. This cannot go on. We can no longer ignore the need for a massive scale-up in investment in mental health. We must act together now to make quality mental health care available for all who need it to allow us to recover faster from the COVID-19 crisis. A study conducted by the Rwanda Biomedical Center in 2018 found that in Rwanda, 1% of people suffer from a mental illness known as schizophrenia, 3% have epilepsy, while 12% of those aged between 14 and 65 suffer from depression, and 35% of survivors of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi suffer from depression. According to the United Nations, around 1 billion people worldwide suffer from various mental health problems, with an estimated 3 million deaths each year from alcohol abuse. It is while every 40 seconds a person dies from suicide. Indeed, COVID-19 has been such a stretch for all of us. How has it been for you, Ethan? Uh, have you had to adjust in a really big way, or how has this whole thing been for you? Well, uh, if you don't mind sharing, I, I don't mind really. Um, COVID nineteen has, I think, affected all of us. Um, but the fact that we are not able to socialize um, as much as we would want is one challenge that can easily cause depression to many people. And I think for me, uh, not being able to socialize is something that I'm not used to. Well, I don't know if I'm depressed, but you know, it's, it's a challenge. It's been a challenge. How about you? I would say socializing has been the biggest challenge, but as well, it, I've noticed a difference because then at the beginning of lockdown, yes, you were meant to have that whole social distancing and, and I think it has rubbed off on me a little bit more. So right now I can say I wouldn't mind not socializing a lot, but uh, I guess it's not a good thing. And I think we also hear this very many times and yeah. sometimes we take it for granted to be kind to each other, but we should actually be kind to each other. I because agree. We don't know what people are going through. COVID-19 is still here. Do you have the updates? Yes, uh, still on COVID-19. Well, today, Rwanda registered two new people that tested positive for the coronavirus among the 2,668 tests that were conducted today. 11 new recoveries were registered, and among the positive cases that were identified today, one is in Kigali and one is from Chirehe District. Active cases are currently 1,000. 296. While well, moving on, the Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Resources encourages farmers to store at least 30% of their food produce in order to cope with the unforeseen times. This is while some locals say that long dry spells are among the reasons they don't store food as they should. We found Pasco Uwira Jie at a warehouse in Reru sector in Mujesera district where he had come to take his food he had stored for when times when the one he had grown was done. Together with Uwizeima and Jacqueline, they say food storage helps them to not worry.
It helps us a lot at home because at home they steal the crops and sometimes we are extravagant with it. And when the farming period reaches, we don't have seeds. But when we have some that we've stored, when it rains, we plant them. And as you know, there was a dry spell in May. At home, we didn't have anything after the dry spell, not even cassava or the sweet potatoes. And when the sweet potatoes would grow, thieves would steal them, and we would not have what to plant. But if we store the food, then we aren't afraid of it being stolen. On the other hand, residents say that when they don't store food, they might go hungry in the event that what they've grown is not yet ready. The consequences are there because if there is drought and we are not able to get the crops grown, then famine will hit us. In addition to storage done by the locals, the Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Resources has also set up a policy for food storage meant to help those affected by drought and disasters in general. Prior to 2010, the number of agro-processing industries was small, but now these industries have increased and the population too has become more aware of the importance of food storage and the way food storage is done has become more efficient. I encourage locals to prioritize food storage and you've seen in the recent times what's needed most is food. There are times people have money but they can't buy the food. So we encourage farmers to store up to 30% of their produce. Food storage is done at cell sector and district level through cooperatives. Currently, Rwanda has food storage capacity of 290 tons of rice, beans, and maize flour across the country, which is reserved to supply food in case there is a food crisis that has hit. Now, residents of Kanama sector in Rubavo district are attesting that giving each other cows has helped with the unity and reconciliation in the sector located in the western province, despite the tragedy of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. We have more. Donatil Nyebaheshkwe's home received a cow from the cooperative Kodeka Imanzi three years ago. The cooperative is made up of ex-FAR and former RPA soldiers, and she says their gift to her has transformed her family's life. <laughs> As a family here, we can tell all Rwandans that are very happy with the cow we were given. We drink milk and we are well. And so we believe that the unity and reconciliation program is very beneficial. Ernest Kabeja, genocide survivor and neighbor of Donatil, is a member of the cooperative Kodeka Imanzi. He says they decided to give her the cow after her husband was found guilty and sentenced to prison for his crimes during the genocide against Tutsis as a way of helping her overcome poverty and to promote unity and reconciliation. I am happy when I meet that lady because she always wishes blessings upon me, because she knows I am among the people who gave her a cow. Yet I was one of the people who testified against her husband during the trial. That shows me that unity and reconciliation is possible and people can heal. Such initiatives are also praised by Alois Hatejikimana, who is an ex-FAR and now serves as a member of the Kanama Sector Consultative Council. We have all benefited from this unity. She got a cow and now there are more than one. Some have even developed to the point of having barns of cows. Because of such initiatives, unity and reconciliation has been promoted and we are happy, sharing what we have and content in our hearts. Kanama residents have taken a step further, working to resolve other problems in their sector, such as domestic violence as a way of promoting harmony among themselves and keeping families together. Well, in the tech world, this last weekend on the 3rd to 4th of October, a team of young Rwandan engineers organized the largest virtual hackathon in Kigali, NASA Space Apps Challenge. Over 20 participants 
participated virtually and nine teams submitted projects on space technology, data analysis, jet propulsion, and various other technologies. The main purpose for the weekend was to highlight the importance of space technology in Africa and build a community of space enthusiasts and learn about the vast applications of space technology. Earlier, we spoke to Giza Charlotte, NASA Space App co-lead, to shed more light on this initiative. Charlotte Bridger, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for team. having me, Athen. I really appreciate it. Now, um, there's a lot about the NASA Space Challenge and NASA, NASA Space App and the Darkson itself. Um, one would want to know, what is this about? What is this about? So NASA Space Apps has been happening since 2012 around the world in different cities, uh, more than 200 cities, but it has never come to Kigali. So this year, me and my friends, uh, three other co-leads, we wanted to bring something, uh, a hackathon to Rwanda, uh, for people to come together, collaborate, innovate, and um, bring projects together using space data um, that is already available online. Yeah. What is the background of you and your friends in terms of, uh, you know, are you um, into space uh, technology? What yes, uh, so most of our backgrounds are engineering and also analytics. So I'm very, um, uh, my background is in information technology. Mm. I really love data analytics. My other colleague called uh, Sylvia Macario. She's mm. the co-founder of Hefta Analytics. Her company also does uh, outsourcing for analytics platform. Another one is Abhinav Gautam. He's also a co-founder of Freshbox that deals with agri-tech technology and he also has an engineering background. And then the last one is also Aran Nashera, who is a co-founder of Impact Higali, that is also a space for people to come together and uh, build technology projects. So all of us are into technology and we love this and we wanted to bring something new like this. So that is what brought us together and that is uh, what made us do this. Mm. Yeah. What is the purpose of a NASA Space Hackathon? The purpose was to bring collaboration, innovation, creativity, and uh, make people uh, demystify mm -hmm. what space is about. People usually think it's all about physics, all about math, but something they cannot enter to. But we wanted to invite people who are artists, even artists, people into data science, people into software engineering, to come together and build amazing things. And what we have seen in the past weekend was really amazing that uh, our youth are so talented and they have so much to bring to the world. What came out of the hackathon? What came out of Hackathon? So we had 10 teams. Um, the highlights ones that I can think about are Floodways and uh and Ichi forecast. Ichi means, in Kinyanda means a long dry season. So thus, uh, our, um, our team members were able to, to build a design for a web app that predicts and alerts people about heavy rains. This can be used for people working in construction lines so they can know that when is heavy rains coming so they can build a foundation and not uh, and plan for the year and their budget. Also, it can help people who are living in slums so that governments can allocate a budget to help them uh, uh, allocates in case there are heavy rains and also uh, people who are in farming, right? They need to know uh, when, when are the heavy rains coming so that we also plan for our, for our seasons. So, and then another project that came out of it was called Floodways. So our, the, t the team members were Ineza Bonte and Pascaline. They were able to build a, a data visualization map so that people can see um, uh, in Rwanda, how many how many deaths occurred? How many houses were were destroyed because of floods? So this can help governments um, know um, where to really focus their attention on and just give them information. So it's really good for data decision making. So it was it was amazing to see what he can be able to build. Some of his team members didn't know even how to code, but they were able to learn so much over this weekend because of that collaboration, because of that. Uh, because of the pressure that is there when you have to build something in just two days, yeah. Mm. So it was um, talking about you've talked about uh, weather and climate, and now one wonders and the fact that it has the word NASA in it. Mm. Are you partnering with NASA? Who are the main partners that you're having on board? Yes. So NASA helped us to build a platform for these uh, applicants to register and also to submit their projects. So it because it was all virtual. They really gave us uh, the tools to, to help us make this project succeed. So they gave us the page to, to, for them to register. They gave us the, uh, the tools to use Slack and to use Zoom. And they also uh, provided us with the data and also uh, resources such as uh, uh, registering your platform on a domain if 
for free for the uh, applicants as well. Mm. How are you working with the government of Rwanda? Is it uh, entirely private or is it a partnership? Again? So yes, we reached out to Rwanda Space Agency and also the Ministry of ICT. Uh, the Rwanda Space Agency was able to provide mentorship for the projects that came out of this. So the winners who are global nominees who uh, compete with others around the world will be able to get mentorship from Rwanda Space Agency and help them build um, their projects even more. And also for any for anything they want, they can always reach out. We, we connect to them. And then also um, Ivira Dukunda, the permanent secretary of ICT, came out this yesterday for a ceremony to say, to just give a word of encouragement to the participants and it was, we were so honored for that. Yeah. Mm. What are the awards for the winners of the so, um Among Us, Hepta Analytics was able to provide them with uh, airtime worth of 12,500 12,500 francs, and then... Um, 12,000 francs? Yes, yes, okay. yes, but also mentorship from the Aranda Space Agency was an award, and and uh, for the global nominees, if they win, we, if they win uh, amongst the ones uh, globally, they will be able to be featured on the social media of NASA, and also to, to go to NASA headquarters if travel allows because of COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. Is that all, or that leads us to becoming also another uh, airspace kind of uh, hub in the region? Uh, yeah. What does that lead us to? Yes, so we were, we were so fortunate to be the only only uh, city in the whole of East Africa to do this this year. So um, answering your question, what does this lead us to? It just give people more awareness that space is something that they can enter to, that the youth can, they have something to 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 provide to the world um, that they shouldn't be scared. They they have so many resources, there's so many open source resources that they can use uh, to hack and to build projects and to provide something for the government to use so they can tackle issues such as uh, optimizing agriculture, yield and uh, detecting flood and detecting hazards, so many things that can, they can build, yeah. Mm. Uh, what are the challenges you first uh, holding this virtually? Uh, the challenges, actually, yeah, the challenges was that usually hackathons people, they call you at 9 a.m., you have to come and um, bring a computer. So it's easy for us to control. So it was not very easy for us to control. We had to call people to make sure that they're, um, they're still building, they're still coding. Um, that was a challenge, but the benefit of it was that um, was that people could stay in their houses, right, and and hack. They don't have to come anywhere, so there is no cost on us. Um, so that was the that was the beauty of it. But that, yeah, yeah, that's how I can answer that. Charlotte Wizer, NASA Space App Colleague. Many thanks for finding time to speak to us here on Rwanda TV. Thank you, Akhan. Really you so appreciate it. All the best. You too. <laughs> tonight but I want to remind you to wear your face mask all the time and practice social distancing while in public. Until next time stay safe and stay well and Gloria Mutesi. I'm Ethan Tashabia. Bye for now.